Hello, I'm Beach Starkey at Real Time with IPC in San Diego, here at the booth of Berkeley North America, and delighted to meet with Thomas Kuntz from Schmall, Dennis Push from Schmall, Jesse Session from Tile America. Uh, we're really here initially to talk about the cooperation that has happened over the last year between Schmoll and Teo uh, that has been a cooperative development program for a new, a new generation of sold mask inks uh, where Schmoll have very generously provided the equipment uh, to assist Teo in their development work. Uh, Jesse, perhaps you could give us uh, some overview of the outcome of this uh, cooperative development program? Yes, um, having the cooperation, the partnership with Schmoll and being able to use their machine has actually sped up our development process. We were able to basically make the solder mask more tuned to the wavelengths on their machine. Um, it was a fantastic opportunity to do the testing in-house and make any changes very quickly. The, the, from your point of view as a technical specialist in, in uh, solar resist technology, uh, do you see major differences in requirement between the Asian market and the North American market? Yes, we do. Um, the Asian market, a lot of it is geared towards consumer electronics, so yeah. it's really quick turn business, and so everything is dependent upon speed. Yeah. Um, in the United States, there's a lot of prototyping, so here everybody's looking at fine precision when it comes to the solder mask. Yeah. So that's probably the biggest difference between the two yeah. markets. So would you use the same formulation for, for both ends, or do you formulate separately for these two <laughs> sectors? Both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our goal is always to use the same product for all sectors. Yeah. But in specialty applications, we will gear a product towards the actual market needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Thomas, uh, may I uh, uh, refer to the, I, I have known of Schmaler many, many years ago. I was a user of your drilling equipment in the old days when I actually made printed circuit boards for a, for a living but you've come a long way since then. Your original identity was in uh, drilling and routing machines, but uh, you have uh, machines at virtually every stage now of the PCB manufacturing process. Uh, and you have built a, a reputation uh, for precision, I think, uh, uh, and uh, precision, registration. Uh, could you give us some sort of comment on, on how how Schmoll has moved along the, 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 the path of development? Yeah, uh, basically there's two driving factors yeah. that put us into this situation. Number one is that we see us not as a drilling machine company, we see us as a registration machine yes. company. Yes. And this includes drilling of course and routing yeah. more and more yeah. and laser and uh, finally uh, the eye. The second driving factor was that uh, we are engaged in Bacher since a long time mm -hmm. and Bacher was uh, uh, producing conventional equipment as many people know I believe and when this conventional equipment had the end of the life cycle yeah. um, we had to do something new and it was very clear that due to the characteristics of such machine this could not be done by the Bacher engineers. It's a completely different way, more software, more this. And so we decided to make the next step within the group of small engineers and we have separated a department to just concentrate on this because you cannot mix it up. Mm. But this is how we got to where we are today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in uh, Salzburg in Austria two weeks ago okay. at the uh, conference of the European Institute of British Circuits. And Stefan Kuntz gave a very, very good presentation, which really highlighted, you, you said you're a registration company. He talked about, again, registration at every stage of the process uh, and how 
uh, toler the tolerance chain, because there can be quite a phenomenal tolerance chain in registration through the manufacturing process, but how that chain could be managed and how that chain could be minimised. And that was a very interesting presentation to, to listen to. I was, uh, Thank I you. was well impressed. Uh, we're standing in front of your MDI machine, your, your micro mirror direct imaging machine. Uh, perhaps I can ask Dennis, mm -hmm. uh, could you give us uh, a brief description of uh, the, the way this machine works, what its capability is? Yes, um, the machine is uh, based on all the experience that Schmoll has from drilling and routing machines, so we do um, have a granite basis. Uh, we do have fast linear motion. This is uh, basically to guarantee a highly precision machine. And we are using a light engine with multiple wavelengths. Yeah. The, the benefit of multiple wavelengths uh, is really the versatility of the, of the machine. Uh, in that you could, this machine will really image any photo image or material, I would, I would presume. But certainly, for, I think from the point of view of the solar resist supplier, whereas in the early days of direct imaging, where there was a single wavelength uh, uh, laser source, uh, it was necessary for the formulator to formulate his photo initiator system to match the, the available wavelength. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, Jesse has some uh, experience of, of, of that situation. Absolutely. But now, now, now you have uh, this multiple wavelength capability, really you can tune your, your uh, imaging system to suit whatever photo initiator system is, 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 is offered. Can you, can you comment on that? Um, yeah, it gives uh, us a very wide uh, range of spectrum that we, are, that we can use yeah. and uh, a high flexibility to work with different types of materials. Yeah, yeah. If we look at the solar resists that have been the subject of this, this development program, uh, what sort of uh, speed are we able to achieve with, with the MDI system? What sort of resolution are we able to achieve with the MDI system? Um, this really depends on the machine configuration itself. Yep. So the machine can be equipped with one light hen uh, engine or can be upgraded up to a multiple head system and this will decrease the exposure yeah. speed. And But also the effect of the four different wavelengths yeah. gives us um, the power available um, to process at very high speed. Yeah. So basically, it's a, it's a scalable system, as it tells you. Yeah, the scalability is one thing, but why we work together with Tayo is that we realize that the standard inks mm. were very slow and yeah. not adapted to this new kind of wavelength system. Yeah. And to take advantage of this, of the spectrum between 405 and 365, yeah. we wanted them to improve, the, let's say, the traditional kind of ink yeah. and uh, when we talked last year on this show we said okay but to do it right we really need to have a multiple uh, yeah. amount yeah. of tests because you do a little bit here you do a little bit yeah. there and you have to find and then you have to put it back to the customer to see yeah. the further process whether this really comes back yeah. to the surfaces and all of this stuff so this gives speed then with yes. a requested quality and, yeah. and this is a big factor just to throw some figures, we, we have uh, about 20 customers in the market and after they change to this, what we would call, maybe it's not right, DI inks. That's correct. Uh, you could, in average, halfen the time yes. um, with this. And I've seen also uh, inks that even do less. Mm. They may have some, uh, let's say, uh, single-minded characteristics so we, you can go lower but yeah. if you want to have a broad bandwidth of application then I think it's about half that you can achieve. Yes. But, uh, as an outsider it's very encouraging to see what can be achieved by cooperation. You could achieve certain things in isolation. Uh, you, you have a lot of, of engineering resources. Uh, Tayo could achieve a lot of things in isolation. They have a lot of, of uh, formulation resources but to have this, this sort of direct exchange and this direct cooperation, one uh, gives, it, it, it speeds the development program, but at the, other, at the other end, you know that both ends of the, both the hardware and the material 
are optimized to each other. Yeah. It's, it's not only a question of optimization, it's also a question of trust from customer side. Yeah. Because when they know, ah, oh, this technology has met the, uh, the specifications of uh, the ink, yeah. then they have a bigger trust to say, okay, this is gonna work. Yeah. Of course, we still have to see what is the special application of the customer. This may vary a little bit, mm -hmm. but there's a basic foundation. Yeah. And we have seen it very often that customer come with some ink, hey, please do it. Mm. And this sometimes works, yeah. but sometimes doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. And this is pretty important to yeah. know. And, and for this reason, we said, just as Tayo is a major supply in the US, mm. just let's define something which would work for sure well. Yeah. And the customer can say, not only I'm buying a machine, I'm buying a system. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think this was the idea of our common project that the customer feels secure and if he got this kind of task to do, yeah. he knows what he's gonna get. Yeah. Yes, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. Having, having I say, in, in a, a previous generation, been uh, the, the user on the other end, the user that's gotta make sure that the hardware works with the, with the material. Yes. But to, to know that because of cooperation further up the line, uh, things have already been, been proven. So, I think you always have to consider that the same happens, of course, with drilling machines. Mm. But we can drill holes in our factory and inspect them very easily. Mm. In exposure, it's completely different. You mm. need to have the right uh, material to coat. You have to have the right uh, uh, developing equipment. So this is pretty difficult for us. Yeah. For this reason, the process to get a right result is much, much more longer and, and uh, also not predictable. Yeah, yeah. And for this reason, it was a good way to put this together. And yeah. we had to send the machine to US anyway for this show. So we decided to send it six months more early. Yeah. And so this didn't hurt us a lot. And they had a good benefit. And yeah. we, of course, too. So very much a, a win, a win-win situation. Uh, just, just turning to the, 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 the machine itself, uh, Thomas, uh, I see a machine with a single panel on the, on the platform. Uh, is there any scope for the future to make this an, an automated process? Well, first of all, we have a tandem machine. Yeah. This means you can exchange this to a much bigger platform, which has two tables, so you can load and unload yeah. while the machine yeah. is working. And both of the machines also have automated uh, systems. So yeah. we have done this already for the market. Yeah. Not in the US, but in Europe. Yeah. So both systems are available uh, with automation. Of course, it has to be looked at yes. pan panel size yeah. and, and all of yeah. this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But in general, of course, they are, they are available. Yeah. On the other hand, we see that our current market very much is uh, dominated by customers who want to be very flexible. Yes. Uh, inner layer, outer layer, solder mask, and smaller size customers that really like the size of the machine yeah, yeah. towards the flexibility that they yeah. get. So uh, automation comes into the game if you want yeah. to have more mass production, yeah. but this is not typically our customer yeah. base in this kind of yeah, market. Sure. But from what you've explained, really you have a system that is, is uh, very, very broadly uh, scalable, flexible, adaptable. You can start with the most basic system. You can scale up the capacity of that of that system. You can automate the capacity of that system. You can adapt it to specific uh, requirements, or you can make, just make it a, a, a very versatile system that can really handle uh, any any particular uh, uh, task that you that you offer to it. Yes. This has been a very interesting conversation. I'm delighted to have had the opportunity to, to talk to you guys. Is there anything else that you believe that we ought to discuss while we have the opportunity? Well, we see uh, that this market will further develop in the future. Yeah. Tighter tolerances. Yeah. Um, future systems may have better, even better resolution. Yeah. This already has got a good resolution, but we see a trend. Yeah towards this, but we also see if you do this, you also have to change other equipment in the process. Yeah. So, but we, we see a trend for this and, and yeah. people are interested in that. And of course we are working on that as well. Of course. So yeah. step by step. Yeah. Uh, our goal is not to be, let's say, the, the big biggest contender in this market. We would like to gain experience with, uh, with registration, 
combine it with our line of other registration products and understand what the customer is is uh, being driven by yeah. de demands of the market and yeah. th th this is our general goal so okay well gentlemen thank you thomas thank you dennis thank you jesse thank you okay welcome big starkey real time with ipc thank you